Just a bit of background. You know, as Dean of Agriculture, I'm involved with a national organization called the Board on Agriculture Assembly, and that's part of an even bigger organization called the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities. And so going back even to about 2015, I think, this group, the Board on Ag Assembly, initiated a process to catalog the state of the nation's uh, land grant universities in terms of their, you know, facility, uh, the uh, shape of their facilities and so forth. And basically all of us were knowing that we had quite a bit of deferred maintenance. Our buildings were built, a lot of them, in the 1950s, 1960s. And so, of course, they were getting to be well over 50, 60 years old. And K-State, of course, submitted data to that uh, process. So we had already identified, you know, what were our greatest needs in the college. And so fast forward to the spring of 2022, in fact, in February, not quite spring, uh, when President Rich Linton arrived and the legislature continued to meet through its session. He shared some of the needs for K-State, and we became aware that we had opportunities to raise, well, to, to be awarded initially $25 million, and then we had an opportunity for an additional $25 million if we could raise $75 million philanthropically, and so we did that, and uh, that was, you know, quite surprising, but also quite gratifying. And then uh, just this past the legislative session, we had the opportunity to uh, obtain another $25 25 million from the state, but we had to again match it uh, one for one. So we've done all that. And so we're well along our way at raising a total of $210 million for this thing we've been calling the Ag Innovation Initiative. So what is that? The Ag Innovation Initiative is going to be four newly constructed buildings, the Agronomy Research and Innovation Center, that's two buildings, the Bilbrey Family Event Center, which is essentially a modernized livestock arena, and then the Global Center for Grain and Food Innovation, which will be the new home for the Department of Grain Science and Industry, but will also uh, have some unique characteristics to it as well. There will be two buildings with major renovations, and that will be Call and Weber Hall. That's the current home, of course, the Department of Animal Sciences and Industry, including the Food Science Program, which is in Animal Sciences and Industry. And then there'll be three Three buildings which will not be renovated but will eventually be demolished. Weber Arena, that's one of them. Uh, and then down the road, Schellenberger Hall and Feed Technology Hall, that's that kind of that connector off of Schellenberger that connects Schellenberger Hall to East Waters Hall, uh, that will come down as well. And it isn't known exactly what will go in that space eventually, but those buildings will be coming down. The arena is already, already on its way down. So back to this uh, the Global Center, our president, uh, Rich Linton, has insisted that we plan for up to 30% of that new space to be dedicated to multidisciplinary activities. And so we've got that planned for. We don't know exactly who all will be uh, in that multidisciplinary space. So in addition to the Department of Grain Science and Industry faculty, we're planning for some multidisciplinary teams to occupy that space. And the leading candidates uh, so far are a statistical consulting team. We've called it the Statistical Consulting Laboratory. I don't know if it will retain that name, but a, a cluster of statisticians that support research in the College of Ag, but broader than that as well. The uh, new Kansas Water Institute that the uh, legislature approved that will be based out of K-State, but involves a lot more of the Regents schools than just K-State. And then an initiative that's called ID3A, that's the Institute for Digital Ag and Advanced Analytics. We think at least some of those faculty probably will be housed in the new Global Center as well. You know, and the point of that is is to get disciplines intermixing with one another, to plan for really facilitated what architects call collisions of ideas. And that's what we hope will happen in this new interdisciplinary space. 
Obviously, there'll be a heavy emphasis on food science and uh, value-added foods. And then if you think about it, we'll now have both the Department of Grain Science and the Department of Animal Science really kind of co-located in a cluster of three big buildings, Call, Weber Hall, and now this new Global Center. And they'll be actually connected by, uh, you know, by sky bridges. And so we'll have in one space on that corner both livestock, and grain slash plant-based value-added foods capability all in one complex. And that will be unique among all the land-grant universities uh, in the United States. So we're really proud of that and actually looking forward to that coming to reality. And when will that happen? It should happen by mid-year, maybe by the third quarter of uh, 2026. So a ways away, but not that far away. So we're really looking forward to that. I think what it does is you know, just from a purely pragmatic perspective, Schellenberger Hall is absolutely our worst building. And so, you know, it takes that deferred maintenance off of our ledger. I mean, that in itself wasn't our goal, but that's a positive. That's a benefit for us and replace it with a new modernized facility. Obviously, new, new facilities are attractive to everybody, but if you think about it as a student, who's looking at a school to go to, maybe has an interest in uh, animal science or grain science, or maybe even just the food system writ large. This is gonna be very, very attractive to prospective students and their families. So we wanna be a magnet for students who have an interest you know, in those areas. And if one other sidebar, between grain science and animal science, if you add those two up, and Actually, you could just start with the student enrollment in animal science. It's the largest major on campus by quite a bit. Over half of the students in the college will be kind of milling around in that space and taking classes in that space and so forth. So we think there's a very, very obvious benefit to students. There should be a very obvious benefit to us from a recruiting perspective. We think also this will bolster our research in you know kind of new and different uh, areas. And one of those that I should mention is uh, we're really excited about expanding our footprint in the pet food manufacturing arena. The state of Kansas really has a big footprint in the pet food manufacturing side of things. Of course, everyone, I think most people know about Hills Pet Food, Hills Pet Nutrition, and Topeka expanded to Tonganoxy, and there are others, uh, the Sabetha area, a lot of manufacturing equipment uh, that's utilized in both the food and pet food industry comes from that area of the state. So those are all really positive benefits, not just for K-State, but I think thinking about uh, growing the Kansas economy as well. What is your hope for industry involvement in this new project? Yeah, so if you take the, the Department of Grain Science and Industry, and you could argue that more than almost any other department on campus, it's more closely tied to an allied industry than any other academic department on campus. And really, that's because it serves the broad grain milling, the baking, and now animal feed and pet food areas. And yes, Arden Mill, the largest milling company in the U.S., has actually publicly invested in this facility, and that's because they have an interest in hiring our students. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a real great relationship there. So you mentioned third quarter of 2026. Does this project affect students in the meantime at all? Well, uh, unfortunately, it may initially be more of an inconvenience than a benefit while the construction fence is up. But I think, you know, we can anticipate that the excitement we'll be building as this uh, as steel starts coming out of the ground between Call and Weber Hall. The Global Center building that will be the last one to be completed is the biggest and most complex components of the Ag Innovation Initiative. But I think the Bilbrey Event Center will be completed you know, well ahead. So the benefits of the other projects, the Agronomy uh, Education and Innovation Center, uh, I think will be completed maybe by closer to the end of calendar year 2025 or maybe early calendar year 2026. But what I will say is for students entering 
entering as freshmen this fall, and maybe even for students that are coming back as sophomores, they can count on by the time they're walking across the stage at Bramlage to receive their diplomas, these projects being completed. You know, and I think that's an exciting thing that doesn't happen during the course of, you know, obviously everyone's college career. So, I mean, that's a little bit of promise there. Definitely. Well, I'm pretty excited about these things. Might go back to get a higher degree or something. Um, Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. I think that answered all the questions I had. All right. Well, happy to talk to you. You take care now. Thank you. You too.